All right, everyone. Welcome to the Outplay Podcast. I am Johnny Esports. I'm joined, as always, by Globus from Lineage Esports, and we're here to talk about League of Legends, what's happening, what's what's maybe going to happen as we go into the last week, and, of course, the, the biggest story of all of League of Legends, <laughs> my fantasy team crushed Globus's, yeah. and I'm very happy. <laughs> yeah, I went shulk or bust, and I busted hard. Busted, I, eh? I went and looked, because I thought, after, like, towards the end of the week, there was only a few games left. I was looking at the score and I thought, you know, if I kept my original team, I might have beaten you. I did the math; I still would have lost. Yeah, I, I did. Well, I I beat everyone. I had I over five hundred points that week. Yeah, so it was five hundred forty. And, and was, after their loss, uh, which is our which is our match of the week, the Phoenix one versus TSM game. After mm-hmm. TSM lost that, I thought, unless they score really well, I actually could could win. And they they did score very well in their second yeah. game. But I was dumb. I was so excited and and it, and it fell <laughs> short. But uh, interesting tidbit for for our fantasy LCS league is that if I win this week and you lose, I win the whole thing. Yeah. And if you win and I win, or just you win, then you win the whole thing. Yeah. Because I have well, I, I say either way, no matter what happens, I will likely finish with the most total points. Right. So I'm still the greatest. <laughs> it won't matter on the scoreboard if I win. So uh, for those of you who haven't played enough LCS or fantasy LCS, uh, you face off a different person each week. So even though you get higher points, you only face against one person and you only mm-hmm. have to beat the one person. And so going into the last week, me and Johnny are actually of our eight man ladder for, tied for first at six wins and two losses. And so we both face different people this week. Mm-hmm. If I win and he loses, I'll win. That's it. Yeah. You have an easier matchup too. I do have an easier matchup. I'm hoping Nick can beat you. If TSN doesn't do great. And they face Immortals, so this could actually be an interesting week, uh, yeah. fantasy points-wise. Which also might bite me in the butt because they might just like be a slaughter fest for 40 minutes. <laughs> well, the interesting about Immortals, uh, I know we're just going off about fantasy. We'll talk about yeah. everything we're actually <laughs> talking about with Phoenix 1 and, and, and uh, TSM there. But uh, the interesting thing about Immortals is that even though like obviously they score a lot of fantasy points because they're such a dominant team, because they're kind of reckless, they actually give up a lot of fantasy yes, points too. So um, uh, they win games, so they don't really give a crap about doing that. Right. <laughs> um, so like it could work out both ways. I have obviously I, I keep telling you I have half my roster is TSM and I have Huni, so like all that could all equal up a crap load of points still. I'm I'm hoping not, <laughs> but <that was> see. <laughs> um, so yeah. Speaking speaking about morals, uh, talking about uh, North America, we're coming into the last week. And so mm-hmm. the interesting aspect here is that because there are only two games left for each team, um, that whoever faces top six gets into playoffs, and seven and eight do nothing, and ninth and tenth get relegated. And right now, Immortals, uh, for whatever reason, it's funny, on the website, it actually shows Immortal above TSM in the standings, but TSM should be ahead because they have uh, um, the head-to-head. TSM has beaten them once already. <laughs> so... Uh, so right now, Immortals and TSM are tied for first, which is really interesting. Uh, they're both tied at 15 and 1. Third place is Cloud9, 10 and 6. So there's no there's no way TSM Immortals now doesn't finish first or second. Yeah. It's just going to come down to who finishes first based on their matchup uh, this mm-hmm. week. Um, Cloud9 could potentially get them to that fourth spot. And then uh, currently sitting at fourth uh, is tied actually Liquid and CLG. Mm-hmm. And then in sixth is Envy who is only one win away from being knocked out of playoffs uh, by Apex. And I think that's super interesting for next week because I actually um, I actually don't I ta- know what's going to happen. I talked here. about last week about how Apex can make it in. So now, now it does make it really interesting that there is this distinct possibility. I'll, I'll be really disappointed because I thought Envy was going to be a strong team. We talked about this at the beginning where I thought Envy oh, yeah. was going to be a strong team. And they showed up super well for the first half of the split. Mm-hmm. Um, and mind you, they didn't take wins off TSM Immortals, but no one had, right? Yeah. And so they were very much like a third or fourth place team. Um, I, I put them on par with Cloud9 in the, in the first half of the split, and they were very good. And then mm-hmm. the second half of the split, and there was, uh, there was minor meta changes that happened. Um, I think a big one is that I feel that the top lane meta is, is, is kind of destroyed. Like, yeah. this, this current meta is not only very bot-focused, but very, very tower trade focused. Mm-hmm. And I feel like Envy's shot calling is not entirely there. Um, or like their rotations more specifically. Like their team fighting is very strong, but I feel like their mm-hmm. rotations are not great. Um, and so these teams kind of just walk over them a lot. Um, which is actually ironically why I think CLG is on the rise. Uh, 
because I feel that the the way the meta has shifted into a more rotation based um, meta, like a lot of tower trading and early dragons are a huge deal. I feel that teams like CLG and Cloud9, who have much better rotations, are going to start seeing a rise. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they can't argue with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, bad. My entire brain was thinking, I gotta add to this point, but I'm like, he's just saying everything I would say. <laughs> so. um, yeah, I don't have much to say about NA this week, which is interesting, because normally we, we talk a lot about NA, mm -hmm. um, only because we watch a lot more of it. I don't have much to say because I feel like everything happened in, in the way that I thought it would. Um, besides, the, besides Phoenix One, <laughs> right? Uh, the CLG versus Liquid matchup, I, I really was interested in, and um, if not for the upset, I would have. I think we both would have agreed on this. As, oh yeah, as the match because it was a very good match. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually more interested to see coming into this last week. Uh, how Liquid will do, because Liquid faces both Apex and Cloud9. And the real interesting part to me here is, so Liquid has... They they should beat Apex. To prove, like, they're, they're in the playoffs no matter what. There's no way a Liquid gets out of playoffs. Yeah. But if Liquid can't beat Apex, that to me kind of says a bad omen going into playoffs. Mm -hmm. And then they face Cloud9 the day later. Now, Cloud9, uh, I, I don't think we can disagree, is the third best team, right? Like, right behind TSM and Immortals. Yeah, based on consistency, for sure. I would say CLG, when playing at their best, could sit in that spot. But obviously, because of the start of the season, their standings are, way, are not uh, uh, usually fair. there. But yeah, That's a fair point. Okay, I can agree to that. I would put CLG maybe on par. Um, but with that said... Liquid, who has, it, for any of those of you who have been paying attention long term, Liquid has, the joke is he always finishes fourth, because Liquid has the issue of every split, the fact that the last few splits, they do very well in this regular season, but when it comes to playoffs, kind of choke and fall. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, there was the, the, the former roster uh, with Piglet, Phoenix, um, Quas, and I Will Dominate, it was very, very expected of them to make it to Worlds, and then they happened to lose on every front. Um, mm -hmm. Like, it was surprising they lost in playoffs, uh, and then they got and then they got beat by um, LMQ at the time, and then when the Gauntlet was created, the split... Oh, so that was a split later. I'm, 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 I'm wrong there. That was the... That was <laughs> their formerly curse. Um, yeah. When they, when they played in the, in the standings, they lost the playoffs. Um, I can't remember who to, and then when the gauntlet happened, Cloud9 had that run through the gauntlet that nobody was expecting. Yeah. Um, the reverse sweep of all of the enemy. Every team, yeah. So <laughs> poor Liquid, who had been this very strong team all, all season, just had a poor showing. And so um, I'm really hopeful that they actually can do well in this last week because I feel like that's going to really, really um, announce how they will do in playoffs. Mm -hmm. Because if they lose to Apex, I, have, I, have, I say they lose out in any round of the playoffs. If they beat Apex... And if they beat Cloud9, then I, I could see them doing well. And if they lose yeah. to Cloud9, mind you, things happen, right? Metas change, and there could be a patch change between now and then. That, right. Um, or even just a strategy change, right? You, it, you could beat any team on any given day, mm -hmm. like TSM Phoenix. Um, but I, I feel like if the, the last game of the split, if they don't show up against Cloud9, then I have, I have little... Um, little, little expectations, yeah. Yeah, for me, like, for me, that's like, it's... it's I like going this week thinking, man, it's just going to be exciting to watch everything. I don't have, like, a preference, more or less. Um, maybe I go, I'd like to see Apex win because I think they're uh, this, this this shiny upcoming team. And you also make playoffs. Here, guys. Yeah, and I think that'd be really cool. Um, uh, maybe I'll see them in Toronto. Um, like, <laughs> I think it would just be cool uh, if they if they, if they they kept going on. Mm -hmm. um, but the other part of me wants to see Liquid um, finally put it together. Because this is a team that's always, always on that brink. Always on, like, like yeah, the joke is forever forced, but they seriously are always there. Yep. I, and it's like, it's like, it's, 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 it's beyond a meme. <laughs> it's, it's they just can't break through that spot. And I want to see, I kind of want to see them do it. So I think either storyline, I think um, Gary Lawless, who's a, who's a sports journalist here, he says he right. always cheers for storylines. I don't even know which storyline I think is cooler between Apex winning or Liquid finally breaking through. Um, either or I think would be exciting. I, I think it's it's one of those things that uh, for a team like Liquid, you have to imagine that um, being fourth is actually probably the worst position to be in. Because if you're a low-tier team, you're expected to be a low-tier team. Yeah. Liquid has been literally one win or one loss away from 
uh, potentially making it to Worlds or uh, to the finals of NALCS so many times mm-hmm. that it's 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 got to be heartbreaking. Um, other uh, the other aspect, you know, when you're talking about Apex, is that their second game is actually against CLG, mm-hmm. which I, I this doesn't bode well. Well, and we talked about this how. Um, I thought that Envy was going to make the playoffs only because Envy has a very easy week uh, in Phoenix 1 and Echo Fox, mm-hmm. whereas Apex has to play against CLG and Liquid. And so mm-hmm. here's what I'm going to say. At this moment in the second half of the split, I believe Apex does deserve to be in the playoffs more than Envy. Right. Um, but that's not how splits work, right? There's a, there's a long term, and that's the whole <laughs> point. It's all about the adaptability. Mm-hmm. So right now, I think Apex is a better team. And if Apex can beat Liquid and or CLG, you, they've proven to me they're a playoff team. Because if you can't take games off of these lower, I'm going to say lower teams that are going to be in playoffs, then there's no chance of you uh, doing well in playoffs. Right. Whereas Envy, uh, who has been on a slump, faces Phoenix 1, who's been on the rise. Uh, mm-hmm. And then Echo Fox, which should be an easy, w- easy win. But if Envy loses either of those games, uh, then there is a chance for a tie or a takeover by Apex. Yeah. And if Envy loses the Phoenix one, I think that Apex deserves that shot. I would really love to see a tiebreaker yeah. um, for that last playoff spot. I yeah. love that storyline of the extra games. Yeah. Well, for yeah, for me, it's like Envy versus Phoenix one's obviously super interesting because because uh, Phoenix one proved that they can be a pretty strong team. They obviously got they lost to Cloud Nine, uh, but again, beating TSM is obviously means they can they can beat anyone at right. that point. So you want to see that. Uh, for me, I actually think Team Envy versus Echo Fox could be a very, very interesting game in, in the sense that Echo Fox, why wouldn't they want to play spoiler? Like, this game doesn't mean anything to them. Right. But, like, they could just... You always see this team that plays spoiler at somewhere near the end of the season. And basically, that was Phoenix 1 um, uh, knocking TSM off their undefeated streak. But um, you could see that you could see Echo Fox really wanted to prepare for this game. And we're going, like, let's, yeah, let's just ruin Team Envy's <laughs> lives here. Uh, Johnny, I think you have too much Echo Fox faith. You know, you and I, this entire <laughs> split, have been hoping for well, it. It's well, I fell off the Echo Fox train around week six, and they've just been down on them all this whole time. I'm just like, week nine? This is your last chance to do something cool? <laughs> <laughs> so last chance. It's yeah. I we'll see. I I don't see it happening. And I, <laughs> I don't realistically. It nah, should. I know, but it always does. The blue shell always happens in LCS. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, this is too strong. Yeah, I know. Uh, like complexity. <laughs> Mo- moving over. Speaking of complexity, we're talking about Prawly in H two K. Um, we're gonna move over to Europe. Uh, I actually have. Uh, I'm actually in, in a weird spot with Europe because. Because the way the point system works, I said points really weird. Points. <laughs> points. Um, there is very little chance of change in the bracket right now, um, because the the slot between unicorns and vitality is four points. So for that to change, uh, the way the point system works, vitality would have to win um, every game, because if they win one 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 one, they only get two points. If they win. 2-0, or sorry, if they win 2-0 and 1-1, they get four points, which would tie Unicorns if Unicorns loses every game. So mm-hmm. for, for Vitality this week to, to have a chance at the playoffs, and Shulk as well, because they're both at 16 points, they have to win three out of four games, and Unicorns also has to lose every game. Yeah, which I don't see happening. I, I don't see Vitality 2 0 in G2. Maybe they take a game off them, sure. But, but Vitality I also faces Shulk, which is very interesting. Yeah. Because... The interesting aspect here, and this is the spoiler to talk, um, or playing spoiler talk, as you had said, mm-hmm. is Vitality and Shulk, 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 uh, on their first day, Shulk plays Giants, and Vitality faces G2. Mm-hmm. Now, if either team takes a game, or or both, off of the their opponents, then either team has a shot at making it to playoffs. Mm-hmm. And then they face each other. And the interesting yeah. thing here is that if they face each other... Um, essentially, you want one team to win 2-0, or they just kill each other's shot at playoffs. Yeah. Because if they tie 1-1, each team gets one point. Uh, and then which, it's over. And then it's over. So it's really interesting to me, because it's like, um, it's it, it's actually an aggravating thing. You know, we, we constantly talk about, and I think we just have the hate for the EU system of best <laughs> But it's interesting, because like, not only do these do these teams have to win, but they have to win 2-0 or it's almost not worth it. Like, winning the yeah. 1-1 will do nothing for them. And it is possible that Unicorns take new games. I mean, they play against H2K, 
and they play against Splice. And I and I would like to think because Splice has been doing so well recently, I don't see them dropping a game this week actually. Mm-hmm. Um, but against H two K, and I actually want to talk about this quite a bit. Um, I actually think H two K is not going to do great this week, uh, and I'm hoping they do. But I I like to play into the thought process of uh, the backstage of teams. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like like I I I've always had the thought process that. Um, roster changes and coaching changes and stuff like that play into more of a team psychology than people think. Right. Uh, like, even if you're adding in a stronger player, a lot of times it's either going to be very good or very bad. Uh, case in point, Anoria and Phoenix 1, one roster change makes this team very strong. Um, mm-hmm. Case in point, um, you have with H2K, they get Freeze and suddenly they're kind of a mid-tier team versus the team yeah. they, were, they were last year. Um, Freeze is actually having issues right now with tendonitis. So, there's an interesting thought here that because Freeze has tendonitis and he's being told that the only treatment is rest, um, I believe that not only does this mean that he may potentially not play, but if he does play, he's going to be playing with less practice. Mm -hmm. Because, obviously, he's going to be being told not to play as well. And when you're playing at such a high level, that minor pain could be enough to miss one skill shot or... Mm-hmm. Caught out of position for one second, and they will. Your opponents will jump on that. And the other interesting thing is, right now H two K sub is forgiven. Yeah, they recently <laughs> signed forgiven, and um, we we didn't talk too much about some of these signings um, because uh, Europe and NA both Europe did more so, I think, but both mm-hmm. both regions did because with the roster lock date, what it essentially means is if you're not on the roster by this date, you have no chance of being subbed in during playoffs. And so a lot of organizations sign people who they may never ever even they'll never even consider using, but they have them signed there because the idea is, if if you know something happens, if if Bjergsen breaks his arm, uh, mm. you know they have someone who could fill in at last moment. Yeah. Um, or they forfeit right, and they don't want to do that. So H2K signing Forgiven, I feel like was that was that they don't feel they don't want to work with Forgiven. Yeah. But it's he's the best available option, and he's available at a moment's notice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially since Forgiven, apparently this injury, it's it's going back to his uh, time in NA, uh, he's been dealing with it. Freeze. So, or, sorry, yeah, freeze. Freeze, I mean. yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, it's, yeah, since he was on the Renegades, he was saying he was dealing with this injury. So if it's if it's seriously that serious at this point, well, yeah, it, it is good to have that insurance policy. Um, obviously, you see that in regular sports everywhere, and, and it, it just makes sense, even though, like, mm-hmm. Forgiven is busy playing Overwatch. <laughs> well, uh, and, and to add to that, Forgiven and Vander don't get along at all. Right. Um, when he, Forgiven was originally dropped from the team, Vander talked about if they had ever, if they ever resign Forgiven or bring Forgiven, if they ever bring Forgiven in again, Vander will quit. <laughs> Apparently, it was just it was such a bad environment for them. And yeah. I believe it was uh, the other. I believe it was it was less than a week ago. It was a few days ago. Uh, they actually got into a fight on Twitter. Um, basically, they um, someone memed at the other uh, some bad joke, and they just and forgive it very <laughs> offensively, and they start arguing. Um, oh, and so, even if forgiven is not played, I feel like the emotional aspect of Vander thinking oh, there's a chance that forgiven gets played. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's enough to almost you know unsettle uh, the team environment, and I feel like. Right now, H two K is a team that's te- that teams that that their team environment is probably not as great as, as it could be, um, mm-hmm. because their team that once they became H two K were actually a very strong team. Oh yeah. Um, and I've I've commended Prawley's coaching uh, extensively in the past, but I feel like as of late, I don't know if Prawley didn't adjust so well to the meta, um, mm-hmm. but I feel like their play style is a little too um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not expected. Uh, Predictable. It's a little too predictable mm-hmm. um, because H2K has a lot of players that play specific signature champs. Um, it's almost like the elements of old, where it's just like ban, ban Anivia, blah 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 blah. And it's it's the same with Ryu and Freeze, and that they have signature champs in like Draven and LeBlanc. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that they haven't quite adapted to the new meta. Um, so I'm I'm hoping they do well, but I have I have low expectations, and I actually think that. H2K might be the reason Vitality or Shulk don't make playoffs because they face Unicorns, and if they lose 2-0, then Unicorns is guaranteed to make playoffs. Mm-hmm. Um, moving on, I kind of want to talk about uh, what I think is really interesting is the the meta change in picks uh, this coming week. 
Okay. If that's okay, unless you got something else on, you're like, yeah. No, sure. no, no. Uh, well, uh, the only thing I would potentially want to touch on, because uh, we don't talk, I think we don't talk quite enough about it. Um, it's just, it's just how well Splice has looked um, in general. Obviously, we mentioned like, oh, they look good, and then, and then we kind of yeah, just, like, we, I move think on from it I think a bit. Because I'm so used to Splice being a terrible team that I kind of just like, oh yeah, they're just having a good week, and they constantly yeah. have good weeks back to back. So, <laughs> um, yeah. I think Splice, I think an interesting uh, thing to note about Splice is um, their uh, champion pools are so huge, it almost feels like they're flexing their muscles. Mm -hmm. um, like, just to give you a, 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 uh, an idea, their last four games, um, they've played four different AD carries, four different supports, three different junglers, three different top laners, and three different mid laners. Yeah. And... Uh, and these aren't against weak teams. This is against H2K and Fnatic. Mm -hmm. uh, they beat Fnatic with two entirely different comps, aside from the Fiora pick. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Splice... Splice to me is hard is hard to judge because I find that a lot of times uh, in, in, recent spl in, in previous splits, aside from one team like Immortals, 9 out of 10 teams that do well in the LCS, especially in Europe and NA, I think it's different in Korea... Uh, and in China even, but usually in Europe and NA, most teams that do well in, in the bracket uh, are teams that have one particular play style and then just become a master at it. Right. Um, Cloud9 is a perfect example of that. For those of you who have been following Cloud9 for a long time, their thing was they always had the Zyra Ash bot lane, um, and Meteos was a farm centric jungler. Um, mm -hmm. Last splits, uh, Immortals actually I actually would agree would probably or fit the play, same playstyle. Their playstyle was the carry top laner, camping the top laner, getting him ahead, um, the tank jungler, and then essentially the aggressive bot lane. Um, mm -hmm. And then you have um, this past split CLG as well. They 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 were interesting because their their playstyle adapted from this very split push meta into this very bot lane centric protect the AD carry uh, team. And the thing that's interesting about Splice, I feel, is that if you look not only at their at their champion pools, but that their their play styles game to game, mm -hmm. I I can't pin it down. Yeah, and I respect but, that for sure. What I, what I think is what I think is really nice and what's really cool about this team is that like coming into the season, I was like we were talking about like surprise fantasy picks, and I was like I threw Senkux's name out there because I'm like this is the only guy on this team that's any good anyway, so maybe he'll get a bunch of points. Um, but like, yeah, like you were saying, it's not it's not a lot of him. One week you'll be hearing oh man this copy guy is a god, and then you'll be hearing about Trashy, and then you'll be about, and then you'll hear about Senkux, and then like it all comes down to like. Um, different people carrying it at, at, at various different times and i think that's one of the one it's of the, like the tsm what, of europe honestly yeah you know it exactly is what it is it's it's i think what you see out of the best teams in the world even if you go to skt and we all everyone always talks all oh, this team is all about faker and all about the when they had bang go off he he, he would go off and carry the team and it'd be win, and it didn't matter you had faker but if obviously if you had faker it, it happened marin was the best player at worlds last last um uh, last worlds right. and it was all about him playing a monster in top lane and i think what's best is that like you you always credit like low economy people. It's like these yeah. people don't just throw all their resources at one person and hope that guy carries. They throw it they like in the micro of the game or in the macro of the game, they yeah. go, Well this person you could use the resources right now because he's he's going off, he's feeling it right now, and we know he's got this either he's got the C S lead or or whatever, you've got a solo kill already. So then then they feed the resources to someone. It's never like the case where, okay, in this game we're just our win condition we decided already is feed the top lane. Right. It's for for teams like right now TSM, um, the the Splice team, it's as the game goes on, they're deciding where to put their resources, and it's really hard, I think, for the other teams to counter it yeah. because they go they go, you go, you go through a pick and ban, and you say okay, well obviously we should keep the the Fiora down or whatever mm -hmm. champion, um, but if the if they're throwing a curveball at you and they're suddenly feeding the mid lane, then uh, it just makes it it makes it really hard, and um, mm -hmm. I, yeah, definitely Yamato Cannon, uh, I'll I'll do credit to to him as a coach right now for for taking this this group of basically unknown players. Like there, there a lot of them stayed together from last split, but they were garbage last split. So the only um, change was the support. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. The only change was support. And so yeah, yeah. I, Huge credit to you for doing that. I agree, I, and I written them off. I, you talked about Senkux, and I remember last split, prior to them coming in, uh, there was a lot of talk about Senkux. And they were like, he's the next Forbidden, blah 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 blah. Because in yeah. Challenger, he was an amazing mid laner. Mm -hmm. He came into the LCS, and not only was the team 
pretty bad. But Senkux never really became like a, I don't know how to, how to put this nicely, but he was never never even considered the top like eight mid laners. Yeah. Like sometimes teams have a star player and then a terrible team. This yeah. was straight up like everyone was not doing great. Mm -hmm. And the only roster change he made was a support player um, this split. And I didn't feel like that was enough. I felt like the team, as much as I respect Model Khan as a coach, I feel like his, his um, not only his play style, but his coaching style, from what I've seen from videos, um, he's very direct and very... Um, he kind of commands respect in the way Daylor does, and I right. feel like coaches like that are much better than, than the buddy-buddy coaches or the former player coaches. Mm -hmm. um, and so I always respected that, but I never felt like he was going to be able to, you know... Um, I didn't think his team was going to be good enough to be able to, that's to just do it. what he wants. That's like, just, he, could he, say, he wasn't going to accomplish yeah. anything with his team. Yeah, because you, you could see in interviews, post-interviews uh, uh, from this game, that like, he'd be talking about what this team should be doing, and then he'd be like, yeah, but your team never did that. But obviously, yeah. like, he would be telling his team to do those things, but they just weren't doing it. So it didn't seem like this team was going to be responsive in the long run. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, they, they stuck with it. Again, like you said, like they only changed Mikix in, in support. Um, the rest of the team remained the same, and uh, they were able to kind of build on that. I guess you hope for a team like, like, like say, Apex in NA that's kind of on that brink there um, uh, to, 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 to grow, because you never know what they're going to do next split, um, I, I even, actually, even if they don't make playoffs now. I, I agree. I actually feel like if there's a roster that's going to make uh, a change going into the next split i would agree it's apex um because i feel like apex as a team they they found their footing for a little while in relying on ray and they haven't mm -hmm. been able to since because the meta is is away from that and apex yeah. even i think with maybe one roster change um could be a very strong team and i feel like yeah. apex um has the proper coaching staff I actually I, I, ironically i just shit talked former um, former player coaches. St. Vicious is probably the one former player coach I respect the most. Uh, mm -hmm. And they have Cop as well, who I felt did very well um, with uh, 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 Gravity. And yeah. so I feel like that those are the only two that... I, and, I, and maybe it's just my own personal uh, assumptions because I always respected St. Vicious as a player. But right. the thing I like about St. Vicious is that much as he's a former player, he again is... like I would not want to talk back to St. Vicious. If there's any former player <laughs> out there that's like... That's like, oh yeah, shut up. Like your time's done, old man. Like no, I feel like <laughs> if, Saint, if there's anyone out there that's gonna like kick your ass and make you listen to what what he needs to say, I feel like it's Saint Vicious. So yeah, I, I respect that. Um, yeah, I'm I'm excited to see the splice, and I'm actually I'm really excited for the for the European uh, playoffs more than the NA ones. Um, mm -hmm. And the reason is because I feel like NA, and I hate to say this, and and but I I, I am gonna say it, I feel like. Two spots going to Worlds are guaranteed in TSM and Immortals. I don't see right. it not happening. Um, I think the Gauntlet's going to be interesting because um, TSM and Immortals are almost gu are guaranteed to finish either top four in the playoffs or potentially both in the finals if they both win their, their quarterfinals matchups. So if we assume that one of them wins um, the split, which, let's be honest, it could not happen. Neither of them could win, honestly, in which case we have an interesting, mm. real interesting situation. Yeah. But I feel like one of them is going to. So yeah. if even if Immortals wins, they take the first seed to Worlds. Mm -hmm. You're you're ninety nine percent guaranteed that TSM gets the most points for that second slot because they finished first last split. Um, or sorry, they didn't finish first. They finished, they finished second, second. Second. So CLG last split. is kind of in there. Right, and then they have uh, if they finish top four or make it to the finals, then they get points to finish uh, to finish mm -hmm. uh, first overall. Because the, the points are also seeded so that the second split, this split, uh, wait, is weighted a lot more. Um, I believe, like, third place is as much as first place last split. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of weight on finishing second place this split. Yeah. But the gauntlet, I feel like, is interesting because... You, I, but I still feel like it's going to be CLG or Cloud9. Like, I don't feel yeah. there's any chance for anyone else. Europe, on the other hand... Mm -hmm. uh, and this is what, what I want to talk about. Aside from G2... Um, I, I feel it's guaranteed worlds because either through points or through just winning the split. Yeah. I actually feel like of any of the playoff teams, it's very possible we could see any of those teams make it to worlds. Mm -hmm. um, Splice is doing very well, but I, I, I constantly underdog them, and I don't know yeah. if that's going to just play through. And they also <laughs> have the disadvantage of, I believe they're going into this split with zero points. Yeah, they basically have to win to make it. Well, they could like, if they finish. Or they could do the if they finish top four, um, they're guaranteed a slot in the gauntlet, but they might be at the bottom of the gauntlet. Yeah. Um, because on added to that, Giants also have zero points. Mm -hmm. uh, unicorns, I believe, have either ten or not. I believe they have ten. In H two K and Fnatic are the only others with points. Mm -hmm. 
Well, Origin finished second last split. So they but Origin it can't but, like, make playoffs. Yeah. <laughs> if, if The only way Origin makes playoffs, by the way, is if Origin wins every game this week and Unicorns uh, win or lose every game and Vitality and Shulk 1-1 one, one each other. Like, <laughs> it's such an odd, like, it could happen. We could potentially have this really interesting I think tie. I think Unicorns have the tiebreaker on that where Origin wouldn't, though. I think I remember hearing about that. Uh, I don't know, honestly. I don't, I don't know. I, yeah, do it's kind of a weird thing. Oh, yeah. I, th- I think happen. because of just the straight-up win record, because uh, Un- Origin can finish four with four wins, and even if Unicorns lose all their games, they still have five wins. Right. I think I oh, think that comes to play. I don't know. Europe's system is screwy. <laughs> I actually want to see, once this week, if finishes, I'm going to probably do it myself. Because like, someone <laughs> on Reddit will do it, honestly, but I'll, I want to I wanna go and check. I want to see what... Um, what the records would be for best of ones in each region right and also what best of twos would be in north america because i'm really curious to see like if there would be any playoff changes um Mm -hmm. and and that leads me to my next point uh because it's eight o'clock uh we'll move on to uh the one team that would have beaten tsm uh, if it was if it was best of ones which is (laughs) echo fox yeah but it's not best of ones it's best of threes and the only (laughs) team to beat tsm so far is phoenix one yeah Segway. <laughs> Segway. <laughs> um, so if you if you came here through the Facebook uh, post, um, yeah, um, coming into this game, Dyrus goes and says uh, he'll shave his head if, uh, if if TSM loses matchup because it was like it seemed unreasonable for Phoenix One to to win this. Um, they do. Um, I actually just coincidentally shaved my head, but let's just say I was just doing the same thing, and I was like, Dyrus, bro, I'm with you. <laughs> it's solidarity it, it, it's, um, it was really funny I love the video that popped up on reddit which was sad Dyrus yeah. uh, which is him realizing he's got a head, head shaved and they the <laughs> phoenix symbol behind him and he's just yeah. like it just says hello darkness my old friend <laughs> it was beautiful um, yeah I'm actually I here's the thing it's funny because I talked about just last week how if TSM loses a game I'm okay with it because TSM had lost a few one games, but not a full series yet. And yeah. I talked about how um, that even in their losses, they look strong, which is very important yeah. for a team. Um, and that TSM, it's not even like they're just bodying people, but they actually are playing a very strong game. And it, I, I want people to, I want them to lose games because it, it shows that they're able to adapt. Immortals of last split is famous for almost having a perfect record only to do terrible in the playoffs because they could not adapt. Yeah. Uh, and I was saying last week, too, that like sometimes I'm more impressed by a team being able to win 2-1 to one after, say, dropping the second game or whatever than I am with a team right. that goes 2-0. Because you see, you win that first game, you lose that second game, you could, then you really see what are you made of mentally um, after, after losing a, a, a second game. So, yeah. And, like, that, and I agree wholeheartedly. I think that uh, and TSM's team, mind you, that has a track record of always doing well in best of series... Mm-hmm. Um, partly because they're the one team in NA that's probably been in the most best of series just yeah. because their their length and they've been doing so well in the finals um, all the time. Yeah, and so but they but they've always done well. Um, and so I like going into this like if there ever was a team that was going to beat TSM, I never would have expected Phoenix one. And the <laughs> first game, I think we can kind of gloss over um, only because it wasn't how you'd expect it. Exactly, it was right? low kills because TSM just out rotated. You know, mm-hmm. they took like how many towers back to back to back. Um, mm-hmm. non-stop, and, and Phoenix 1 only took two. I mean, TSM took a tower and a dragon um, for the one tower that Phoenix took uh, in the early yeah. game. And it kind of continued that way, like, where TSM just was out-trading, out-rotating in a way that, like, again, it's not really worth talking about because it was just... It's- that just, it was TSM. Yeah, just the way TSM plays the game. <laughs> you, um, you, 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 go, you go for an objective, they get two out of you, right? Like, yeah. that's, just, that's, that's, that's been their strength. I'll split. I do want to talk about actually one point that's interesting to me. Um, so most teams have been doing the trade of, of Sivir for Karma. Right. Um, Phoenix One actually decides to ban Karma, uh, which I thought was really interesting, uh, only because a lot of these teams uh, that are... Um, that because the bot lane is very utility focused right now, 
a lot of teams are running uh, Bard or Karma because of the the movement speed and the the uh, utility of, of going through the Bard tunnels. Mm -hmm. um, and right now, the best bot leader t uh, combo is Sif or Karma. And so usually a first pick will grab one of the other, and the other team grabs the other. Uh, and then they kind of just trade those picks. Um, right. I thought it was interesting the Phoenix won Bad Karma. I, I'm not a fan of it, um, only because I felt like uh, their team comp... Uh, you know, as much as it, Braum actually is a better pick, I would have liked if they had taken Sivir over Ezreal because I feel like giving um, giving TSM the Sivir without having the the other, like without having the Karma to kind of counteract it, I feel like mm. is is kind of shoot yourself in the foot. So I feel like right. they, they could have left both open uh, and hoped that TSM took the the Karma and then take the Sivir. And if they don't, then they could have just drafted around it differently. And I feel like right. that Phoenix One kind of shot themselves in the foot in the first comp. Add Bjergsen on Malzahar, which I thought was really interesting because the way the, that this this uh, meta has changed so that Malzahar is a top tier pick now. Yeah, this the, which which a little bit bugs me because I, I feel like I feel like Malzahar is one of those like low skill cap champions. Like not that I play Malzahar, I don't play mid lane, <laughs> you, but like you should it's low skill cap. Yeah, <laughs> I should because it's because I'm bad. But uh, it it's it's one of those weird picks that I'm just like. And it's not super exciting to watch. He alts someone, and and it doesn't like doesn't seem to do a whole lot, but it's so strong right now. Um, it's that's my just his ultimate, small though. It, it's the minions, right? Because it shreds yeah. the players, but also um, uh, towers. And and the thing with Malzahar is that there's there's very little counterplay in that. Mm -hmm. It's very easy because you're you're throwing minions. It's not a skill shot. You mean you got your Q, but I mean aside from that, uh, yeah. Like, it's one of those things, like, it's, it's, uh, like, I, I don't know if it's a response to, like, the million Azir nerfs, and, like, the Azir nerfs are just targeted at the pros, because mm -hmm. he's such a high skill cap champion, and he's exciting to watch, um, and, and it's great, so that's, what they, they continuously nerfed him, because they're like, okay, we need the pros to play other champions, but right. now they're just playing Malzahar, and I'm like, uh, that's not really an improvement in terms of, uh, from a viewing standpoint, mm -hmm. anyway. And, and I feel like Malzahar's in a place that, um, he is kind of topic, like, I don't feel like there's a real counter to him yet. Uh, mm -hmm. And there might be at some point, but right, like I never felt like, aside from like hard engaged jugglers because he has no mobility. But the thing mm -hmm. with Belzar is that right now he's he's kind of like a hybrid digger on after his rework, where like ganking him is almost a fifty fifty because he might just be able to two v one you if it's after level yeah. four. Um, <laughs> so moving to our second game, I think Belzar actually is a big reason for the mm -hmm. for the for the Phoenix one victory. Yeah. Um. TSM keeps the same bands. I'm actually curious about the Gangplank band. I don't know. I don't know enough to. Must be a scrim thing. He ends I... up playing in game three, but yeah. Yeah, I just I I I mean, like going into this, I don't feel like Gangplank's worthy of a ban. Uh, I don't know how he is in this meta because right now the top lane is a lot of tanks and a lot yeah. of like uh, Trundle and Nar. Uh, so I don't know how how good he is, but mm -hmm. apparently I guess they felt it was it was worth batting. Um, and speaking of Nar, Phoenix won actually because of the Nar of last game that Hanser played. They actually again don't ban the Karma, uh, and, or, they, or this time they don't ban the Karma and they ban the Nar, and they do exactly what I said, which I, I actually had I forgot the picks of ads. Look at this page, <laughs> but they do exactly what I had said, where they gave up the Karma and took the Sivir instead, uh, but they <laughs> kept the Braum. Um, yeah, this game uh, was really interesting to watch uh, because. I, I because asked, Rengar. Rengar. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it, it was because Rengar. There's always the joke of NA Rengar. Yeah. Because we've like competitively when Rengar was like the top tier juggler, there was never really a, a good North American Rengar, uh, and Anori kind of makes you question that now, which <laughs> I respect because uh, I feel like Sven Skarin got walked through the whole game, like. Uh, to put in perspective for you, uh, Anori has a 5k gold leak on Fence Garrett by the end of the game. Uh, mm -hmm. And when the, when the team gold is separated by uh, 10k, or well, 11k, uh, and ha and half of that is on the jungle difference, Yeah, that kind of says something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, no. Rengar, Rengar, Rengar is one of those champions, too, that you that, that is super exciting to watch, because, like, especially from... Uh, we're just going back to just uh, talking about what's a good spectator champion. Um, Rengar is great because, like, uh, stealth champions, I think, are great in general because, obviously, as the audience, you can see the person there. Right. So it's, like, this intriguing thing of, like, oh, is he, is, he's not gonna, he doesn't see him. He's going to get, he's gonna yeah. get him. Um, that's why, like, I really like when Evelyn uh, was was kind of a, a, a prevalent champion in, in the LCS. Right. Um, hasn't been for a while. But, um, 
Yeah, so Rengar comes in here and, and it becomes a really exciting pick. In my head, seeing the picks, I was like, that's hilarious you're playing Rengar. However, this is TSM, so they're still just going to... They're, they're going to mess you up anyway. It won't be that exciting. Um, but, oh, I was wrong. And, and, and Rengar ends up being this, this, this monster of a pick. Um, and Inori um, definitely made a name for himself and, and maybe in this game alone. And I think, I think actually, and I don't know uh, enough uh, of the, of the uh, what do you call it, the thought process behind Phoenix One, but I feel <laughs> like they must have realized that the combo of Malzahar and Rengar uh, was so deadly because the idea of that alt lockdown mixed with the Rengar jumping on you was an instant kill a million times over. And I feel like yeah. Phoenix One, and I got to commend either their coaching staff or their team for coming up with that. I feel mm -hmm. like it's a one trick that I don't see working that well. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 yeah, I definitely feel like it's not going to suddenly become this meta thing, but I feel like, especially a team like Phoenix One, you're, you're going up against the number one team in the league, you're, you've been at the bottom, you've been on the rise, but you've been on the bottom of the league for so long, right. it's like, go for it. Like what, like, what are you about to lose to not go for a pick like this? Well, that's just uh, it, yeah. yeah. I, I agree wholeheartedly, and I think that uh, I respect it, and I feel like uh, Phoenix One, they have been on a rise lately, and they've been doing very well, and it was like, well, they're not going to beat TSM, though, and here, yeah. here, here we are. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I feel like the combo is really interesting, and I actually like it. But I just I don't see it being useful in any other situations because I feel like people are now going to be like, okay, well, most likely they're going to bat the mouths, mind you. Uh, but I feel yeah. like I don't know enough if Rengar is uh, a viable pick. Not so much like viable pick in that uh, he's viable across the NA meta because, mm. mind you, uh, right now I don't feel like Rengar is great in this meta. But I want, I'm actually very curious to see if Rengar is a viable pick for Inori. Um, yeah. And that sounds weird to word that. I'm trying to word that differently, but... Yeah, no, but, but sometimes you just get a person on a champion, that, like, despite it not being a meta, that's like, you, people get signature champions for a reason, right? Right, and that... You just, you just play that. Yeah, I agree, and, I, and I'm actually really curious if we'll ever see, if we'll see a comp that doesn't involve Malzahar, uh, that involves Rengar from Inori, uh... Mm -hmm. A time again this split I would actually I would love to see it uh, I don't know if it'll happen yeah um, like skipping ahead a bit but like th game three like TSM does ban the Rengar because they're like we don't know how to deal with that right now <laughs> we just like they don't know uh, yeah. like you said I'm surprised they don't just ban the uh, the the Malzahar instead but um, they go ahead and ban the Rengar because they just like they felt like they got wrecked by it and they probably didn't practice against Rengar all week so they don't know what to do well, that's just it. And um, besides, like stuff you would do in solo queue, but like, that's different, right? Like, so it's just yeah, they didn't. They like, I I like this idea of having this Rengar in your pocket. So it's like this last pick, where it's like, oh, everyone, including the analysts, will be talking about what meta pick they'd put in with this last pick in the jungle, and then it goes, oh, Rengar, and then everyone goes, oh yeah, he played Rengar that one time. Like, it's one of those things you can kind of build on, um, um, and potentially just like throw a wrench in people's plans and, and really right. surprise people's plans. Yeah, I I agree, and, and I think. And, and, and talking back about the Malzahar, um, I, I, I am very interested that they don't ban the Malzahar in the third game. Uh, because the interesting thing to me is that there are sometimes games, and, and Reddit analysts were kind of like, well, they didn't respect the Malzahar, they didn't respect the Malzahar. And mm -hmm. I feel like there's more than that, because, mind you, um, Malzahar, uh, TSM was aware as a strong pick, because they take it in the first game. Yeah. So they understood Malzahar was a top-tier mid laner right now. Um, or at least enough that they felt the, the idea to take it in the first game. So it's like mm -hmm. they weren't aware of this. And, and in an interview, um, in an interview uh, after the game, Double Up talks to Travis about how he felt that their team didn't really understand how to play their champions, and they didn't know how to play against the champions they were playing against. Mm -hmm. um, Which is crazy, because this, this team comp um, for game three for TSM screams TSM to me. Even like, the second game, like yeah, like yeah. Bjergsen has some had some show off games on Talia that makes me think, uh, you yeah. know, like he knows how to play Talia. And to add to that, like there's no champion in there that I'm looking at. Like like Double and Bafras are known for the Lucian Karma. Svenskeren yeah. and Gragas, okay. Hanser and Trundle, like what here is is not or is new to you? Like there's there's mm -hmm. nothing here that's different. And so um, I, I'm actually kind of disappointed in that they they kind of took that excuse. Um, mm -hmm. I'll be honest, I actually feel like the reason for this loss um, is because that TSM, who arguably is guaranteed top two, in the, like they are, they are guaranteed no matter what well, they they are, play, yeah. in the playoffs, uh, and aside from losing to Immortals, they're probably going to finish first. Mm -hmm. I feel like TSM is prepping ahead. I feel like TSM right. probably didn't prep against Phoenix 1 at all. Um, more likely, I feel like TSM 
Um, and, and they haven't really done this. Like, we, like we saw the first one of the games they lost was against Echo Fox earlier in the split. Um, and that week we talked. I think we brought it up that we we believe TSM probably prepared more for the other team than yeah. than Echo Fox. And and TSM, um, it seems like each week that they play against an easy team and a and a stronger team, they always mm-hmm. seem to look stronger against the stronger team. Yeah. Like this week they faced Envy and Phoenix, and mind you, Envy's on a slump, but they yeah. looked very strong against Envy, and then mm-hmm. week against um, and then week against uh, uh, Phoenix. Uh, mm-hmm. And so I feel like that they kind of always just assume that that they just underestimate whatever team. Yeah, um, we'll just play our game. Doesn't matter what they do because we're TSM. Right. One of those, right? Yeah, and and, and earlier this split, I just looked back to see which week they faced Echo Fox. Mm-hmm. Uh, they faced Echo Fox the same week they faced Envy, who was currently on the rise. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they then that week they lost the game to Echo Fox, but then slaughtered Envy. So it was like. Yeah, they probably just took their time to, to prepare for Envy rather mm-hmm. than Echo Fox in this week. Yeah, especially since like Envy was fighting like Envy at this point is still fighting for a playoff spot. So you know like they're they're like Envy is gonna be this team that needs to try a lot harder. Right. So like you like you like you I, I could see it very easily to 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 gloss over um this game a little bit in in, in that way because like. In a sense, it doesn't matter if they lost this game, right? Like, right. Um, uh, SKT is a team that could lose to the Freak of Freaks in, <laughs> and still be considered a top three team in the world. Right. And they did that this week. They lost to the they lost to the Freaks and and and, and then they beat Ever two zero. And then they yeah, then they crush Ever. So uh, it's it's just one of those things where it's just like, don't jump off the bandwagon all of a sudden because they got beat by Phoenix One. Yeah. It's like. They made a mistake, and the great teams will recognize, "Hey, we're human and capable of mistakes, and we'll move on from this." You, you'll maybe you can jump off the bally wagon if they get wrecked by Immortals, but um, I don't see that. I could see it being a very good series, and even if they lose that series, I still think if you're a TSM fan, you can still be a TSM fan, and yeah. and and like I, I think even if. Almost losing to Immortals might even be a, a sort of good thing, mm-hmm. um, in the sense of like the overall like storyline and overall like how this team needs to prepare going to the worlds because they need some controversy going into worlds i think so that they know like we need to take every we need every to keep, game they, need to take, they need to take wild card teams seriously we yeah. saw that over um going on every, msi not even just they, na but at eu as yeah. well yeah exactly right so like there's there's a lot of work ahead of na and i and i want to see tsm get challenged um as much as possible and like I didn't expect it from Phoenix One, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, but I, I, I'm like, we'll, we'll look ahead to the when when we start talking about next week. Um, that's going to be obviously a, a key matchup to be looking at. Yeah, and I agree. I, I feel like it was uh, it, it's good for them to lose because I, again, the Immortals of last split that wasn't able to adapt. Uh, TSM so far has shown they can adapt. Uh, mm-hmm. Nothing too drastic has changed in the meta yet, uh, but I would like to see. And, and we all, we know in, in Worlds past, there's always a, a giant patch heading into Worlds that changes a lot of things. And I'm mm-hmm. kind of hoping that TSM's not only losing here, but even potentially losing a game or two from here on out or in the playoffs uh, mm-hmm. might incite them to be like, okay, uh, we need to prepare for for the next meta and and be yeah and take it and more get seriously. Dub- get double lift on Corky because uh, they're they're already talking about Corky <laughs> every year. It's always Corky and every, every year uh, <laughs> every. the Trinity Force buffs every year. Yeah, uh, interesting tidbit. Um, so I don't know if you have paid attention to the ESPN uh, uh, global power rankings. Yeah, uh, they they release these every week, and it is basically uh, a, a a comprehensive list of who they believe is the best team in the world, and it goes from numbers one to fifty. Um, mm-hmm. And they actually got a lot of controversy over the last few weeks because they ranked TSM so highly. Uh, and last week, I believe TSM was in third place, uh, only behind uh, Rocks Tigers and SKT. Yeah. Um, and then they had TSM as the third best team in the world, and mm-hmm. they got a lot of flack for it. Uh, after this loss this week, they actually dropped TSM five spots. Yeah, uh, into, under Immortals now. Under Immortals now, who are in, who are in sixth place, uh, who were in sixth place last week as well, um, into eighth place. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if that's worth. Um, but mind you, this is a weekly uh, list, so I, yeah, I, okay, fair enough. But I feel like the, the I don't know if that was enough. If that was a reason yeah. to drop them, well, t- yeah. Uh, for me, um, uh, my my thought on that is like you just look at the teams that they kind of now sit, decide to sit ahead of them, and I think a lot of it's like because of who they lost to. I think if it was like TSM, if they lost to say they lost to Envy, maybe they don't drop them as far. Mm-hmm. But they're like you lost to a, uh, I think a four win team so far, um, as opposed to like 
uh, immortals who just kept on winning um, and and uh, theoretically are like sit sit at the same spot in standings, but they at least the team they lost to was TSM. TSM the team they lost to was Phoenix One. So um, I think that's the logic behind putting them slightly behind Immortals now. Um, do I think TSM's better team than Royal Never Give Up? I'm not watching a lot of LPL this split. I know. So I'm, yeah, so me, this is me basing on the last time we've seen Royal Never Give Up, which was not all that great. So um, uh, I would think if RNG is this high, they, they improve a bunch. But from what I remember of RNG, like that team fighting style that they were playing there before, I think Team Solo Mid would be able to pick that apart. Are they better than Samsung Galaxy, KT Rolser, SKT? I think they'd have a. I think they'll have very good matches against those teams, but I wouldn't say I wouldn't definitively say they're better than any of those teams right oh, now. I think. I, I, to be fair, I think that all the teams in the top ten right now are are very, very close. I feel like. Oh yeah. I feel like if there is a, and maybe it's my NA pride a little bit because every year it seems like they NA or EU take a few games off a Korean team. You think good news, and then you see them yeah. get slaughtered by SKT. <laughs> um, but right now, I feel like there actually is in this top ten actually a very yeah. Close... But more like like uh, granted, I've only like really been closely watching LCS in season three. But like more than any other season going into it, where I feel better about NA's chances of at least not just getting slaughtered right. by the Koreans. And I feel like it's not just going to be this Korean show. Um, I think I think Edward Gaming has a very very good shot at. They're undefeated right now over in the LPL. Yeah. They have a very We've had shot faith at, in a Chinese noise. team. Before. I know. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I know. We've been over this before when we when we when we talked about uh, Chinese teams. But um, I, I like. I don't. Th every year, kind of since season three, I've been like, this is just going to be a Korean show. This right. is. I think this. This is the first year since then where I was like. I don't think it's just going to be a Korean show. They are very likely still the SKT is very likely still the favorites to win it. Right. Like or Rocks Tigers or whatever. Right. And they get more but, skins. Yeah, they get more skits. Um, did you see the 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 Ad the, Azir, Yeah. Yeah. Well, the the, the what's it called videos? The um, uh, recall animations that they they yeah. had the SKT guys do. Anyway, that was cool. But um, <laughs> uh, that's a total aside. But I just think there's there there's a good shot that this might be one of the best worlds we've seen yet, and it's not just going to be a Korean smoke show. And I'm very excited about that. I agree. Um, obviously, like sure, Immortals is half a Korean team anyway, but. Um, I'm very excited <laughs> by their chances and TSM's chances, and even even the third team of whoever in NA ends up showing up there, whether that's CLG or Cloud9, I think they're going to make some noise right. and, and, and can be very excited. Uh, I think EU has a very good represent representation um, in, in G2 as long as they don't go on vacation, and I don't think they will this time. I, I uh, actually want to see Splice at Worlds. And yeah, Splice, I would love to see what they could possibly do. It's, um, it's interesting, they don't have any European teams in the top 10, they have them as 11th and 12th in G2 and Splice. Right. Mm -hmm. um, just the head of Africa freaks, Africa freaks. Um, I would, I would love to see Splice at Worlds, only because I love seeing uh, new teams at Worlds. I say new oh, teams yeah. and like rookie players. Uh, yeah, I feel like the experience of going to Worlds actually changes a team. Yeah, um, LMQ was a great example of a team that they they were not even in the top ten in China. They come to NA and suddenly they're beating the best team in China at Worlds. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I would love to see Splice, even if Splice had no chance at winning Worlds. And I don't feel like they do. I'll be honest. I don't. I, I feel like Europe as a whole is actually a lot lower right now. Um, mm. But I, maybe they might they might uh, surprise me. But Splice, I would love to see just take some games off off yeah. some teams. Um, and mm. I I'm really interested to see if that happens. And I and again I I, I referenced the wild card team's performance over at MSI. Um, if the wild cards could, teams could do that, the major region teams in AU and NA um, should be yeah. able to make noise. Like I can't say anyone's going to win Worlds or even finish top four, whatever. Right. Um, but it, it is at least intriguing enough for me not to go, well, a Korean team's just going to win it, who cares? It's not, not like, but like, I would, I'll still watch it, but who cares? It's one of those, you never know. Now it's super, every, anything is super exciting. I just I just was looking through um, uh, the, la the bottom of the list. Interesting tidbit. Uh, they have Phoenix One ahead of LGD and CJ Antis. <laughs> if I had, if I could show myself this team, this roster, uh, like this list, like yeah. uh, at the beginning of the split. Oh my god, <laughs> LGD with Marin now. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyways, let's. I actually uh, Echo Fox at the bottom. <laughs> are they are they still there? They're fiftieth on the bottom. Oh man, that is. Uh... They're behind teams that don't have logos. Let's just put it. In that. <laughs> um, 
I actually want to talk about. I actually want to say one last thing. We we didn't really talk about the third game. We kind of like right. Sorry. Like, no, no, no. We, we we kind of were making points about the third game, but we didn't really uh, close out on it. I, mm -hmm. I, I want to talk about two very interesting points. Um, one is, and it's the pick and bands. And I'm very pick and band focused today because I actually, um, you know, the games, I, I only watched the last two. The first one I kind of half watched. And, and I was more interested in the picks and bands because TSM, I feel like, was just not there in any of those games. But I mm -hmm. love seeing how picks and bands affects, affects their gameplay. And mm -hmm. this game, walking into it, when I saw the picks and bands, I, I would have put money. I would have dropped like a hundred dollar bill right on TSM because <laughs> the they got not only TSM on Bjergsen, or TSM on Bjergsen, blah blah blah. <laughs> Bjergsen on Casio, who is um, no a very strong mid laner right now, uh, and mm -hmm. Bjergsen's very good on, on Cas. They got Sven Skarin on, on Greg. It's okay. They got Hanser on Nar, who was a monster in the first game, and we've seen a lot of good Nar games on Hanser. But they also got the the best bot lane in Sivir and. Yeah, and, and Karma. Everyone agrees this is like the best bot lane possible. Yeah, and so <laughs> at least in the meta, I, I I'm looking at this and I think I don't see them losing any lane. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, even in, in top lane, um, you know the the GP I would I would have underbet very much so uh, wrongly mm -hmm. sadly. Um, yeah, the Rexa I feel like is a safe pick. The Malzahar I actually would have been a little bit fearful of, and then Twitch. Um, I I don't know like I don't know how it pairs off against Sivir. Um, it's and really but, hard because it, it, it's uh, just, just from my silver experience of playing Civil, <laughs> uh, it, it's a bit of a hard matchup in the sense that like yeah you have one thing you could spell shield, um, but the but the Sivir should be very good against the Braum. Right. Um, so like this, but yeah, the spot lane should have should have been able to beat that. And like it, you mentioned, yeah, like you, you're scared of the Malzahar, but at the same time you're like, but it's Bjergsen, so you should and, be fine. Yeah, he's a strong mid laner. And then you look, and if you actually look at the gold differential, the gold differential. Um, the bot lane of TSM is the strongest point of the team because mm -hmm. they they get ahead 60, 60 CS um, mm -hmm. and they also have uh, the closest gold differential of, of the of the players and the largest mm -hmm. is actually in the top lane at five K with Hanser and, and GP and my mm -hmm. GP is actually like bank plank because he gets the added gold uh, <laughs> yeah. and whatnot but it was interesting to me that how well he played um, and not only how well he played but how well the champ played because. Um, I, I don't feel like GP's strong in this meta, and I talked about this earlier, because I feel like the tanks are... are like not, There's not only just tank top laners, but in the mid lane uh, and jungle, it's a lot beefier champions. Like, we're seeing stuff like like Cass, like uh, Victor. Uh, champions that build can build somewhat tangy, or at least Abyssal Scepters, or or Rylize is actually very, um, uh, very top tier for most mages. Mm -hmm. So they have some health to them, so I don't see... You know, GP one shotting any of them with barrels, unless he gets incredibly mm -hmm. ahead, um, which is what we did see, surprisingly. Yeah, well, I think a big part of this was just like their 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 they, the focus they put on the mid lane um, in this game for it was for very mid lane one. Focused, yeah, because yeah, like obviously they got the double kill very early on um, under uh, uh, at the very beginning of the game there, and like that from there was like, all right, they we're gonna leave this on Perian to do work. Um, we have Rek'Sai come into the mid lane again to 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 establish another gank and they end up getting right. three more kills there so it was just kind of like this snowball effect that happened because of like a very very early kills um by 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 Pyrian and 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 Inori there oh my god I'm losing my brain but uh <laughs> and I think th and that has nothing to do with the team comp that that TSM put together because like right. you said that this like I said earlier this comp screams TSM and should have been what would have been there to win but uh they were able to get some picks early, and I think TSM just, like, I don't know if they weren't prepared or what, but, like, they just, they were definitely flat-footed right. too early in this game, and then, it, and then it was just a snowball. Yeah, I agree, and I, and I kind of hope, I kind of hope we see TSM bounce back from this. Um, I'm hoping mm -hmm. that this isn't, like, a, a worrying trend of, of future losses. Um, yeah. And I, and I guess I, I understand people's hesitation on the, on the global power rankings for that. Um, mm -hmm. But... Again, I'm hoping that this was just a, a meta change that they weren't expecting, and Phoenix One did throw some oddball curves in, in the GP, mm -hmm. in the Twitch, in the Malzahar, in the Rengar, uh, mm -hmm. and even a Rumble play was a little bit different because we don't see a lot mm -hmm. of that right now. So I'm I'm hopeful. Um, that being said, going into this finals week, I'm I'm really interested to see some of these games, and I I mean I don't know how we could not choose for Friday, you know, for for the game to look forward to is oh, yeah. Immortals versus TSM. 
for sure. Um, this, is the, this is the winner takes all kind of, you get first place if you win this, basically, right? So um, That being said, yeah. maybe the real game, we should say, is Immortals versus Phoenix 1, which is the next <laughs> game. Maybe this is, you know, even if Phoenix 1, I believe they don't have a chance to make playoffs, but maybe this is a chance for Phoenix 1 to be like, we're, we're actually really good. Not Double only, spoiler. Yeah, <laughs> not only did we beat uh, TSM, but we also beat Immortals. Uh, uh, yeah, and then uh, uh, Phoenix won top 10 in the power rankings after this. <laughs> can't make it to Worlds, but they're still top 10. Yeah. Well, we can dream. All right, all right, but that is the uh, time we have for today. Uh, we're now we're gonna we're, next week. We'll all be wear, we'll be wearing a bunch of Phoenix One gear, and we'll be on this bandwagon. We're gonna get uh, they're gonna like, oh, we, we thought it was Eggle Fox, but really Phoenix One. We just yeah. got the wrong orange. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but thanks for listening, everybody. Um, we'll be back next week to talk about exactly what happens between TSN and Immortals, okay. between everything kind of going on EU. Will that will those teams make up in the, in the playoffs? What's we'll going to happen? Our thoughts for playoffs, yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about how I am a fantasy god no, because no, I'm obviously no, going to win no. and it, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, for from us here at Outplay Podcast, check out Lazy Sport. Uh, we don't have set up yet. I'm lying again. Check out awbonline.com. Uh, check out retouchmedia.com. And yeah. goodbye, internet. Internetleague.com. Goodbye. Internetleague.com. Goodbye, internet. <laughs>